Welcome back. We're so glad you're here. If you're a returning viewer, a listener to the nonprofit show, and if this is your first episode, welcome. We're so glad that you found us. Today, we are thrilled to have with us today in conversation, Lotus Kaplan, and she's here as Chief Development Officer of Family Promise to talk to us about a very interesting concept. And I've heard more and more about this, Lotus, so I'm excited to learn from you. But this process is community-based program models, and Lotus has a lot of experience and and insight to share with us when it comes to this community-based model. But before we hear from Lotus, we want to remind all of you, again, those of you that have joined us before, or perhaps this is your first time, today you also have the two of us. So hello to you, Mm -hmm. Julia Patrick. Julia serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I am her fortunate sidekick. In March of 2020, she reached out and said, I have this kooky idea. Are you up for it? And I said, let's do it. I don't know what I'm signed up for, but we have together produced (laughs) nearly 900 episodes. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. And we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for our amazing presenting sponsors. So thank you to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk, Many of these companies, if not all of them, have been with us on this journey for the last four years, marching towards that 900th episode. I keep mentioning that, and every time I mention it, Julia, including the two of us, our jaws drop, our hair like catches on fire. So yes, every single day, you can find us every weekday, you can find us here for the nonprofit show. And if you happen to miss us and it doesn't quite fit into your schedule, that's okay. We've got you. You can find us, you can scan load, sorry, you can scan and download that I just made like a celebrity name you can scan load. <laughs> scan load's kind of cool I might have to like add that scan load. Scan no, you load. can scan load you can scan this QR code and load the uh the app onto your phone and just a couple of hours after our live conversation right now with Lotus you will receive a notification that the program the episode is now available on your app We're also still on your streaming broadcast platforms as well as your podcast platform. So wherever you choose to consume and maybe even binge watch or listen to your entertainment, you can find The Nonprofit Show right along with everything else. Last night I was binge watching Survivor. um, And so we're pretty much right along there, like, you know, same, same kind of channels, but (laughs) without further ado, Lotus, thank you for, uh, for waiting so patiently. We are thrilled to have you with us today. Again, our viewers and listeners today, we have with us Lotus Kaplan and is the chief development officer at Family Promise here in Arizona. And that is familypromiseaz.org. Welcome to you. Hi, welcome, welcome. How are you both? We're good. We're Wonderful. we're glad to have you. And if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the mission of Family Promise. Okay. Well, I'm actually fairly new to Family Promise. I started here in August or in April. I'm sorry, in April of this year. Um, and I was really moved by what the mission was here, which is um, helping families that are without shelter, find sustainable housing. So we end the cycle of generational homelessness. So it drew me here and um, it actually is, I didn't know this when I joined, I assumed that I was joining a Arizona local nonprofit and come to find out it's actually a national um, nonprofit with national offices in New Jersey. And we are actually the largest shelter for families in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I shared in the green room chatter, maybe even before we went to the green room chatter, my own mother Lotus Mm -hmm. is a volunteer for family promise and she lives within the Columbia, South Carolina uh, mm-hmm. area. And so I've heard about Family Promise. So very aware that it's a national organization. And you you use this community-based program. And I'm curious, and I'm kind of putting you on, on the line here. Were you familiar about community-based programs before you joined in April? Yeah. Good question. You know, I actually volunteered okay. prior to joining. So that's what got me really interested. Um, I had come and done, you know, some of their events, like you had said, your mother had also done like a gala, I had gone to a couple of the galas and the fundraising events. And then I 
joined in volunteering at one of our community-based partners, a church who houses our families, because that's how our model works is that we don't, we don't fully shelter in, in our facilities. We utilize the community to help house and feed our families, which um, puts them back in the community actually. And we'll, we'll talk more about that, but it really gives these families like a sense of belonging and hope as opposed to like staying in a traditional shelter. Sure. So that's how I became really passionate about it. I'm like, oh, I'll come spend the night. Oh, you guys need food? I'd love to. And then as I got more involved, it's like, wow, this is an amazing organization. I, I, and an opportunity came became available. So I said, I'm jumping on board. <laughs> I love it. You know, thank you, Jarrett, for asking that question. Because I think the sometimes for me, Lotus, some of the most inspirational pieces of our visits and, and chats with our guests is what compelled them to do this work and the organization and their journey um, because it takes a special type of person to navigate the very tough topics that we navigate mm -hmm. and the first thing I, I think that we want to start with is like what is the strategy of a community-based program and and maybe like why like what is this the formation of it because I think we hear this and we think, oh, we know what that means, but maybe we don't. So let's start there and have you help us understand it. Okay. Well, community-based really truly means that we really involve the community and there's this, not just a sense of like, oh, I volunteered, but there's an engagement and ownership that happens within a community-based programming model where there's communication and collaboration with our partners throughout like whatever you know whether it be um, organizations volunteers or um, the actual like organizations or churches that house our families there's a strong emphasis on like ownership of this is a community problem it is not something that's going to be solved like from the 10,000 feet view of homelessness it's kind of like overwhelming daunting it's a us versus them but then when we bring in the community and recognize like we're as strong as our weakest link within our community and help to raise them up um, it just makes us and our whole environment much stronger and and happier. Mm -hmm. So that's really what's important about the community-based model. That's why we're super passionate about it. Um, it was difficult during COVID because as things shut down, like the partnerships kind of went, whoa, we're not allowed to house. Like, what do we do? Right. So even two and a half years later, I think this is two and a half years later, it's building back, you know, the partnerships and kind of restructuring them, yeah. you know, with some flexibility as to how this can now work in our sort of post COVID era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, it's so fascinating, fascinating and homelessness is certainly a national issue, if not a global mm -hmm. issue, you know? And so really looking at this from the community standpoint, you know, it's so very clear and I've had the great privilege as well, Lotus, to work in the space of homelessness and and have even more awareness, right, of like what's in my backyard. And um and, and it's it's so prevalent, right? And and especially during the the heightened days of COVID, there was there was like very limited resources, you know, and and so many of us felt helpless. Can you talk to us about meeting the specific communities, you know, like, like there's so much within this. I love that family promise is national because this really does. I believe what I'm hearing and feeling is it takes this community-based program across the nation, right? Completely mm -hmm. across the nation. So can you talk to us about meeting the needs of these spe specific communities? All right. Well, you know, in terms of meeting the needs of our clients, we know what our need is, right? As our organization, we know that we need to help these families into self-sustainability. What we look for is partnerships that align with that need, right? Mm -hmm. So that involves like having an assessment, needs assessment. When an organization or a church comes to us, we can say things like, okay, well, does your mission align with our mission? So thinking more, you know, 
across the board in terms of nonprofit. It's finding community partners that align with your mission. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, do their resources complement the resources that we have, you know, because it's one thing to have the the passion and then alignment. But like, for example, if a church really wants to be a partner with us to house families, if the church is really small and cannot, you know, give private quarters to the number of families that we have available or that we're servicing at that time, maybe that partnership has to be changed a little bit. Okay, well, you can't house. Let's think of different ways in which we can have a partnership. So having that that kind of like asset mapping of what uh, resources you are able to provide, what resources we need or we're able to provide for you. Um, you know, seeking organizations that intersect, maybe not exactly like for us, it's really easy to say like, oh, well, a church, their mission is to help people in need, right? Yeah. But looking for other organizations that can intersect somehow, like, I don't know, a, a sports team, right? That has really nothing to do with what we do. However, our local maybe sports team will say, you know what, you serve us families. We would love to have a partnership where we maybe offer a basketball clinic or a football clinic or something that brings some, some normalcy to our families' lives. And the same can be said in other, you know, another other nonprofit sectors, like finding intersections. Yeah. So, you know, I'm fascinated by this because nonprofits don't always play well together. And, you know, we can have, especially founder um, oriented newer nonprofits or nonprofits that might have a very specific uh, mission based approach or faith based approach or philosophically based approach. Mm -hmm. um, how do you navigate the voices in in the room to play well together? Well, we were talking a little bit about this in the green room, like we as a nonprofit, you, I, you know who you are, you identify, you make your identification, you know, clearly known. And if there is that intersection, you were saying as well, like, sometimes there's just not a fit. Yeah. But <laughs> it's funny, because in the in in this particular realm of nonprofit, what's interesting is that it's such a prevalent problem that I feel like from my limited experience, you know, being here is that all the nonprofits having to do with homelessness, we are a support system. Like we create, we've, you know, we've been able to create this community because right. when a problem is so big and great, recognizing the need that it will not take one, not two, not, you know, it will take the entirety of our efforts in order to solve something. Well, that's profound. And when, other nonprofits understand that, then, you know, that's where the partnerships can be. And then understanding there's enough for everybody. There's enough of this problem for literally everyone to help with, you know? So yeah, it's that capacity building. And many of us can't keep up, right? Like it's mm -hmm. so prevalent and I don't feel like we're even making a difference. I know mm -hmm. we are to the individuals that are, you know, seeking shelter and receiving mm -hmm. some of these benefits. And the need is so great, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it just oh. continues to expand. I love that you brought up the intersection of, you know, maybe a sports teams and things like that. I grew up in a very athletic family mm -hmm. and, you know, all I can think about is sports teams, right? Like there's <laughs> showers, there's multiple showers, there's large areas to congregate, mm -hmm. uh, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, congregate meals that that this you know company or or sports team can provide um and really saying like okay community members you want to mm -hmm. play a part in this what assets what resources right. what availability do you have yeah yeah so yeah it, it's yeah and weird. it takes that leadership too like yeah. having the buy-in so education and some training about like well no you you know I don't service pets. Let's just say your nonprofit's all about pets. Well, no, I don't serve. I don't really care about pets, yeah. but you do care about the people that own the pets. So, or, you know, like thinking outside of that box a little bit and not staying completely in your lane because all of those, like we said, intersections 
that all comes together within a community. It's all woven into one. So being mindful of all of those pieces and the role that you can play in them is um, is positive, powerful. Yeah. One of, one of the things we said earlier was, you know, oftentimes we catch ourselves wanting to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about that? Because I, I do love the partnerships and, you know, ownership and engagement. So how do we, I'm going to say, and I, and I, I don't even love this term, but how do we stay in our own lane? Right. <laughs> right? And, and, and create this like symbiotic you know, relationship with other community members. I love that you mentioned animals because while an organization might not be animal welfare, the individual they're serving, the family they're serving, the community they're, they're serving comes with a pet. So can you talk to us about this? Okay. Um, let me think on that one. Can you repeat the question? So being, I think we were looking, what we're looking to talk about is this community ownership and like oh. how, how do we understand and to Jarrett's point, honor somebody else's work and their commitment, mm -hmm. what might not be ours, but then we, we, we let everybody have a piece of it and, and engage because to me, Jarrett, and you and I, I mean, you and I are perfect to have this discussion because we see it every day. There's a lot of ego involved and there's a lot of righteous behavior involved. Like, mm -hmm. this is my mission. This is what I know to be true. This is what I think is right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't follow me, you know, then you're out, <laughs> right? So how do we kind of come back in, in this community-based model and say, okay, community, there's ownership here mm -hmm. in your lane, as Jared said. Yeah. Well, I, you know, for me, one of the big things I always have to remind myself, regardless, is like communication and collaboration are are like the, the cornerstones of everything when you're working with people, right? The ability to communicate your needs, share what you need from other people, um, give your strengths, and then also being able to collaborate. It's a give and take process. No matter, you know, regardless of what field you're in, I try to be mindful of it's a give and take process. There is no one right there is no one wrong there is not one right way and we can figure out a way to collaborate and work together and that helps build some trust i mean and that's a thing that takes time right building a trusting relationship with other organizations that may or like that you say are like righteous or really are just this is how it should be right that takes time to build trust that we're not stepping on you. You're not stepping on us. We are all working together towards um, a better, brighter community. Yeah, right. But at the end of the day, we're humans. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel like this is such a hard mountain to climb. Yes. And I don't know. I mean, do things have to just get so bad and so overwhelming that the nonprofits work together and, and embrace this community-based model. Um, I don't know. I mean, Jared, what is your opinion about this when you look at the landscape as well? Like, what do you see? Yeah, you know, I, I do see a lot of collaboration and I love Lotus that you brought that to the, the forefront. Collaboration, communication, like that needs to be the cornerstone of moving forward where I see a lot of ego and even, you know, this is what I do, kind of that ownership, Julia, mm -hmm. is more around the financial support. I feel mm -hmm. like in the 1.8 million nonprofits mm -hmm. registered in US, we feel that there is not an infinite amount of financial resources, right? And so that's where I see mm -hmm. the rubber hits the road is mm -hmm. what if what if they get the big grant and we don't get yeah. the big grant? Or what if they get the majority of it and that leaves us with smaller piece of the pie, you know? But we're seeing a lot of organization funders, I should say, funders looking at this collaborative funding model, you know, mm -hmm. from this community-based program you know, we have this in our local community where, you know, there's some funders that say you can only submit if you have three partners, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, looking at that model to say, we want to help you. We want you to help you and others. How do we build this collaboration? Um, and I do think that brings us to our next point, Lotus, about flexibility. 
And I'm really curious in this community-based program and the model that you speak up with Family Promise, where and how flexibility and <laughs> modifications play a role. Yeah. Well, in working with the population we work with, flexibility is kind of like our, our middle name, right? Because every need is different from family to family yeah. and from partnership to partnership. So it's a constant like feedback loop with um, our partners. Yeah. You know, having like we have, for example, for our model, we have like a coordinator who takes on the ownership within the partnership from the other, you know, from the church and constantly having communications with them um, to be like, okay, well, this worked for you. Okay, well, this didn't work for you. I mean, obviously, we stay very aligned to our mission and being aware of cultural sensitivities and things of that nature. But outside of that, we really allow um, our partners to have a voice in what the model looks like, how it's shaped currently, and how it can improve for the future. So there's a lot of like pilot testing, you know, pilot, test it, mm -hmm. examine it, let's take another iteration of it. And that's done in collaboration with our partners, mm -hmm. because what maybe worked a year ago, or pre COVID, or, you know, for this particular um, organization that we work with, they might not have the space or similar resources. So it's a constant like, being modifying, just being mindful, like, always being mindful of the mission, we're, we're willing and able to make um, modifications. Um, one of the things that we do do with our partners is that we have like a covenant or a contract of some sort. So it really outlines the basis of what we do, what they do. So we have like guardrails as we walk along the road together, right? I mean, we may like swerve a little to the left, we may swerve a little <laughs> to the right, and they may as well. And that's okay, because we have a covenant or a contract with them that kind of keeps the guardrails in place. So we still are walking in the same direction towards the same goal. Every time so. I hear guardrail, I can't help but think of my own bowling game, which is really horrible, Mine but you, know, you have the bumpers, you know, and it's like, okay, we might go a little bit this way, a little bit this way, but we're still moving the same mm -hmm. you know, forward direction. Mm -hmm. Lotus, I'm curious with Family Promise being a national organization, mm -hmm. one thing Julie and I have witnessed over the last four years of doing these episodes is geographically, the needs are different, right? So I'm yeah. curious if you can speak to the, you know, overarching national kind of family promise, um, mm -hmm. communication, collaboration, because every, you know, every community in our nation is ever so slightly different. The need mm -hmm. might be there, but how it's met is different. How does national provide perhaps guardrails or, um, resources to really guide, if you will, the the local communities as mm -hmm. they're spread out so far. Well, it's interesting. We're in a, a interesting um, time period right now because, as we were talking about earlier, COVID kind of really threw this huge monkey wrench and mm -hmm. tried to freeze our you know ability to help. And one of the things that's coming out of this sort of uh, post COVID era is the change a little bit to how the model works. And so in some instances, knowing, you know, Family Promise National saying, listen, our goal, our mission is to provide self-sustainability, right? To families, to end generational homelessness. What that may look like in your, in your neck of the woods might be different in that you know what, you are in a small community and you don't have um, the, the number of partnerships needed to sustain like a, a congregational network like we have, but you have space and land. So perhaps it more, it might be something like, well, you can um, build, like we have now some static sites that have, that are working into affordable housing because part of the homeless problem is finding sustainable housing, like once we're able to stabilize them, we're finding like they can't afford housing because the housing prices have gone up. So um, 
we've kind of have some different iterations that are being piloted and tested nationally. And then we meet uh, regionally within Family Promise. So if your nonprofit has like partners or uh, regional or, you know, other locations, it's important to get together and have summits or conferences where you discuss these things, what worked for one, what didn't work for another, the pros and cons. Um, I think what's important too is people are resistant to change sometimes, right? So sometimes. I've heard that. I've heard that about some people. <laughs> some people, right? It's a little, it's a little difficult for um, them to adapt. So I think it's important when you are working with others is to, to celebrate when an adapted change happened and it was successful, right? Taking time to celebrate these successes and knowing like, oh my gosh, somehow we made it through together. Like somehow we did this, we made this adaptation and we are better for it. And then also recognizing you know what, that one didn't work. What can we do better <laughs> next time? Right? Like it's okay. It's okay that something didn't work and we will, yeah. we will improve. We just keep on moving towards improvement. Yeah. yeah. I'm a huge proponent, right? Like if it doesn't work, celebrate that too, because mm -hmm. yeah. you tried yeah. it, right? And you can learn from absolutely mm -hmm. every single opportunity. There are so many amazing CEOs that have been celebrated for their failures. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, I'm just, I'm a huge proponent for that. That might be a little bit of the disruption in me where it's like, hey, let's go against the grain. Let's do something a little different. Yeah. Uh, Lotus, thank you. This has been fascinating. Again, for those of you watching and listening, Family Promise is national. So we are so grateful to have Lotus Kaplan join us today. She's the Chief Development Officer for Family Promise in Arizona. And you can find the website familypromiseaz.org. And again, if you are a community member, which we all are, and you are, have joined us from another part of the region, please look into Family Promise in your community. You might be able to be a wonderful collaborator and contributor to you know, the, the national crisis of homelessness and the needs that families have. So Lotus, it's been so enjoyable. Thank you for Thank you. your time and your expertise on the community-based program model. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, ladies. I appreciate your time. It's yeah. been great. You know, I think this has been an amazing conversation, um, Jarrett, because we, you and I meet so many amazing people every day on the nonprofit show, but a lot of times I spend time off camera trying to connect those folks, right? Because they're doing their just amazing work here, but they really need to be knowing these people over here and, and, and moving together, you know, the parts to make a better whole. And so, uh, Lotus, that was just a, a fabulous way for us to be um, reminded of this piece of it. Um, everybody, again, if you needed to be reminded <laughs> who we are, <laughs> I don't know if you need to be reminded, but I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, Jared R. Ransom, the nonprofit nerd herself, CEO of the Raven Group, is my trusty sidekick. And again, we are here because we have amazing partners. I would say, Jared, in our mm -hmm. own community piece, right? 100%, you know? yes. Yeah, I mean, in the community um, that we serve and, and that we really are have dedicated our lives to, um, our community-based partners include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that really make up our community and they can be a part of your community as well. Lotus, we're gonna invite you to, to listen and, and take into your heart our sign off because it goes like oh. this. We invite everyone to remember to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, ladies. This Hi, has been really you. wonderful. Thank you.